Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Thank you for joining us on our platform, Project 365. I am Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated. And we have the great pleasure, the honor, and the God assignment to render hope, encouragement, and inspiration to you, to our audience across the whole wide world. I'm bringing in my co-host. Hello, everyone. My name is Takara Swan, and I am so happy to be here with you on this Wednesday. <laughs> Today, we have a beautiful guest um, who has come to share some things with us today. But before we bring her on our platform, I just want to remind all of our viewers, if you have not done so already, please go to our YouTube page, like, share, subscribe, so that you can help us bring hope, encouragement, and inspiration to the entire world. To the entire world. We're grateful to God that we are his instruments in doing just that. Well, today, as Takira has already stated, we have a beautiful young lady with us on today. And our topic to our audience today is step, talking about stepping out of the shadow of someone else and stepping into who God has made you to be who he has created you to be from the very first day you were, I was going to say the first day you were born, but even in your mother's womb, hey, you are unique, you are special, you are loved, you got some things going on and the world needs to know just who you are and just who God has made you. Well, welcome Shante. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation to come and boldly share that thing that's bubbling up on the inside of you. We're grateful to God that you are bold, you're beautiful, you're just courageous enough to pull out and be transparent so that you can empower other men and women. Thank you again, and you have the platform. Boom, shoe, Miss Portia. Thank you for having me, and thank you, Takira, for having me as well. I bless God on today just for this opportunity, because truly that is my story, stepping out of the shadow of someone and becoming who God has called me to be. And the interesting part about that is I had to find that out myself. It's not like it's just something I woke up one day knowing it actually took a process of getting to uh, who God is calling me to be. And I'm even realizing in this time now that I'm still becoming. I'm not, it's never going to stop. I'm always going to be learning who God has called me to be, calling me to be, and who I'm becoming in him. And I thank God for that because truly it has been a journey um, I've been one that has grown up in church and, and plenty of us have, but I've grown up in church. Um, I've been around some amazing people and um, my story comes from being that one that had to step out of kind of the background of my mother. My mother was an amazing evangelist, amazing woman of God. To me, an, ama an amazing woman is who I knew her to be, but a lot of people uh, knew her to be even amazing friend and a sister and um, whoever they were in her, um, whoever she was to them. Um, but I grew up in a time where I did not know her as that amazing evangelist that everyone, you know, spoke of her. And I say that because when I was five months pregnant, um, I, my dad passed away. And three days before I gave birth to my son, my mother passed away. So during that time, and I was 19 at this time. So that was a very critical time as a young woman becoming someone and becoming who I am and needing that guidance, not just from my mother, but father as well. And, you know, growing up and being a daddy's girl, uh, absolutely loving my father. Like you could not say anything wrong about Duke. That's what everyone called him. You could not say anything wrong about Duke. Duke had his issues, but you bet not say anything about Duke or we were going to fight. Um, so, um, having those two absent from my life in a very critical time in my life, being pregnant and getting ready to give birth, I missed out on some very critical uh, information, uh, that very critical relationship that I needed from them. Um, and just growing up and being in ministry um, after 
that has happened to me growing up and even uh growing into ministry god called me into ministry late some years later and just constantly hearing um you know on my mom's side people in church saying you look just like your mother and even people in family saying you look just like your father and even people in family saying you look like your mother as well so i got it from all sides um people on my dad's side, uh, people on my mom's side, and then in ministry, and then coming into ministry, because I believe God called me into ministry, um, them saying, you're going to be, you know, just like your mother, you know, you have the anointing, just like your mother, that mantle on your life, just like your mother, you know, I, everything about me reminded them of someone else to the point where, again, at that critical stage in life, not knowing who I was myself, not knowing who Shante was. And every time I turned around, I heard you look like your father. Um, you look like your mother. You sound like your mother. You pray like your mother. Uh, you lead the choir like your mother. So many things being in the shadow of them to the point I just kind of withdrew. I withdrew from everyone. I didn't want to hear it anymore. But not only that, um, even being in the shadow of my mother, it was almost like, well, can I just be Shantae? Who am I? And not knowing and being unsure of who I was, I was trying to live up to an expectation that I didn't even know about. So while I was becoming and learning some things in ministry, um, all I ever heard was, you look like evangelist Harris. And here I am, you know, growing and I'm evangelist Shantae Brown. And I'm just like, well, who is that? And in that process, I cried because it was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know. I didn't even know. This is the interesting part. I didn't even know what I was doing to make you say the things you were saying pertaining to me about her. For instance, you preach just like your mother. I never heard her. I really never heard her preach. All I knew about her was mom. So, uh, and, and again, being younger, being in church, uh, I probably did hear her preach to a degree, but I wasn't paying attention to you know, how she articulated and what she did and how she made it look and any of that. Um, I just knew that she was an, an anointed woman of God. So it was more so she was mom to me and she was that person to you all. And trying to live up to that standard, trying to live up to an expectation that I really didn't know about. And it became to the point where I was living based on what other people were saying. I was moving based on how what other people were saying. Um, and I was trying to walk in the shadow of someone that I didn't know. And it became harder and harder to do because even from the things that I was doing, I didn't know what you were expecting of me. And as much as they said, just be you, you're saying just be you, but you're telling me I remind you of someone else. I look like someone else. So I did not have that help and that guidance from people to be able to be Shantae. I didn't have that help and that guidance from people to be able to be free in who I was. So I struggled for a long time just trying to identify who am I? Lord, what am I supposed to be doing as an evangelist? Lord, what am I supposed to be doing or saying? Or what is the message you would have for me to speak? What is my ministry? And um, even just recently got getting into uh just past the two years ago I, I began to birth this ministry called relentless women and it came from a place where i wanted women in ministry to be free in who they were i wanted women in ministry to be bold enough to walk out who God was calling them to be. And when I say um, being in the shadow of someone, I'm, I, I don't say it with disrespect because a lot of people would you know, think, you know, what's wrong with living in the shadow of your mom and what's wrong with this? It, it, it wasn't in that, it was just, I could not identify me. God, who are you calling Shantae to be? Who are you, uh, who are you, or who have you ordained me to be? And even in reading the scripture to the point where I didn't necessarily understand it then because I was still trying to identify who I was. So relentless women came from a place where I wanted women 
to be bold enough to say to God, who are you calling me to be? Without everyone else's expectations, without what everyone else um, has said about them, without needing validation from everyone. Because not only was I walking this thing out of, Lord, who am I becoming? But I was trying to walk out some brokenness. I was trying to walk out of some hurt. There were some things in my life that happened to me that I never really got to share with people and never had that ability to just cry about. Um, as I said in the beginning, um, when I was five months pregnant, I lost my dad. And in that stage, I was actually in the hospital when my mom had to tell me that. So in that moment, she was like, you know, I need you to be strong for the baby. And Three days before my son came, again, I lost her and everyone said, I need you to be strong for the baby. So there were some things in my life that I was walking out that I'm like, God, I'm broken myself. God, I'm hurt myself. Like, how are you calling me to say relentless women when I myself am broken and hurt and in pain and dealing with things that I never had the ability to truly cry over because I had to be strong for other people. So there's always been this defense mechanism up. There's always been this wall up. And I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know how you can call me relentless when I'm broken. How can you call me relentless or how can I um, help someone else walk boldly and confidently in who you're calling them to be and I'm broken. And it came down to him simply showing me that you're becoming who I want you to be. You have not yet arrived. And I think about that scripture all the time. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me, but I press. He also said even before that, not that I have yet obtained. So I have not yet become who he's called me to be, but I'm becoming who he's called me to be. And so that's what I wanted relentless women. And I thought it was just in ministry. I wanted relentless women because that's what it was in ministry to become who they were becoming in ministry because that was one of my biggest uh, um, things in my life at that moment, ministry, uh, where I expected some people to be help to me and the help that I thought I had as help was really hurting me because even in their, you know, again, their you are like your mom kind of things was really hurting me more than it was helping me. I know that will often be a pat on someone's shoulder. I know that would often be a pat on someone's back. That would often pump someone up and say, you're going to be this great person. You're going, but I didn't know. I didn't know. And it was hurting me more than it was helping me. And it was actually keeping me in a broken place. And interesting enough that it's so easy to stay broken and bound when you're looking for validation from other people. When you yourself don't know who you are, it's so easy to stay bound because you need help from other people to get out from where you are. But what happens when that help from other people is actually hindering you and hurting you more than it's actually helping you? So I realized that it came to a point, like I said, I got to a point where I was like, God, who am I in you? because that's who I want to depend on. I know you from my mother. I know you from my grandmother. I know you from what I've heard, but God, I got to know you from myself because this thing right here, what I'm feeling and what I'm actually doing are two different things. I'm feeling like drawing to you, but what I'm seeing is really drawing me away from you. The people that I need are really drawing me away because they're not helping me as much as I need and they're not helping me in those areas of brokenness. Um, so I got to a point where, like I said, Relentless Women is more of a place where I thought it was just for ministry, but it became about life in general. It's not just ministry, it became about helping women even men helping uh, people to get to a place where, God, you're calling me to be this. Help me to walk that out. Help me to trust who you say that I am, not just because of people's words, not just because of who they say I am, but I want to know who I am for myself, that I can confidently and boldly step in 
to that. With whether they validate me or not, I can still walk in who you've called me to be. Whether they say my name or not, I can still walk in who you called me to be. Whether they know my title or give me a title or not, I can still walk in who you called me to be. Whether I falter or not, God, you still called me to this. No matter what my past was, no matter what I've been through, no matter what I've gone through, God, you still called me to this. And I need to hear clearly from you. What are you saying about me? Who do you see me as? Who is the woman of God that you said I am and who I'm becoming? And the interesting part is we like to see the big picture. I'm a, I, I need to see, tell me all it is that I, I, I'm going to be. But the crazy part about that is even if he told me all that, I would still back away from that because I would say, God, that's too much. But I love how I'm learning, even in my current state, I'm learning how to hear him for myself. I'm learning how to trust him for myself. I'm learning how to walk boldly myself in it. So like I said, if you don't give me another compliment, I'm still who God called me to be. If you don't like the words coming out of my mouth, I'm still who God has called me to be. If you don't like me and my voice and who I am is not for you, I'm still who God has called me to be. And I thank him for that every day. And I've gotten to the point where I acknowledge him in it. And when I hear him and I hear him clearly, I'm like, God, I thank you. That was you. That's letting me and it's confirming in me that I'm hearing his voice for myself. And I'm not saying you don't need a pastor. I'm not saying you don't need um, those in ministry. I'm not taking anything away from anyone else that comes in your life because God knows exactly how and who to place in your life at the right time when you need them. It is the anointing that destroys the yokes on people's lives. So God knows exactly when something is needed or someone is needed in your life. So I bless God for that, but I thank him that he's allowing me through his spirit to know how he's dealing with me and that I can boldly and confidently walk that out because I trust who he's called me to be. I put this in his hands at this point. God, if this who you say I am, if this what you tell me to say, if this what you tell me to do, that's who I'll be. That's what I'll do. And that's how I'll operate because I trust your plan for my life. So I thank God and I, I, I pray um, that Relentless Women is a ministry that will continue to bless women, that will continue to, I even got the message uh, a couple of weeks ago from a pastor that said, it's, it, it, it's time to come out of the background. It's time to come out of the background. No more back burner. No more waiting. No, like the wait is over. Come out of the background and walk in who God has called you to be because your voice is necessary for a time like this, especially in the seasons that we're in. So I bless God on learning who I'm becoming. And it is my mission. It is my goal. Um, it is my desire to see other women, again, to be bold and confident in who they are called to be, Unapolog unapologetically who they are called to be. Stop apologizing for it. You don't have to keep apologizing. Sorry. You know, I'm just, mm -mm, stop. Just stop. No more. So I, I, I bless God for that. Unapologetically. That's Unapologetic. who I am. I'm telling you, and he's made us so unique and different. We just don't fit in anywhere. We don't fit Come in. On. You know, we do. We are. We be. We be who God says we be. Yes. We be it now and we'll be nothing else. Nothing yes. else. That's what my Archbishop Ralph Dennis said. And I believe that statement. I believe that uh, what God has made us, who God has made us, where God has placed us. That's where we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And I don't, we don't, we cannot apologize. Stop, stop. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Stop apologizing for what you do, who you are, what you look like, what you wear, all of that. God has made us so different. And I love that. And I yeah. am, and especially when you have come from a place of low self-esteem, You've Absolutely. come from a place of, and uh, your mother, your mother, your father, your father, your, you're not, you're not like your sisters. You're not like your brother. You're not like, you're right. You're right. Agree with them for that fact. You're right. 
And a shout out to Vanessa Elam. She has a women's movement that uh, states she is free. That is, that is, that's it. She is free. Even Vanessa Elam, my soul wealth sister, that is a statement within the, itself. And that is definitely who she is. She is free. And I tell you what, when you become free after being bound, I'm on. Oh my God. No God. There is no going back. There is no None. going back. None. Ooh. Ooh. You and gotta that's know the relentless part. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the ahead. relentless part. Because I am in a relentless pursuit of God. I am in a relentless pursuit of staying free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I cannot go back to being bound by people's thoughts and opinions and suggestions and ideas of me. I can't do it. I can't do it. I think I cried more then about what they thought about me than I did, than I do now of them, the fact that they're not thinking about me. Cause I used to cry and be like, Lord, they're not even like, they don't even care. Like no one is even listening to me. Mm -mm. Who cares? Because who needs to listen to you will listen to you. Who needs to hear you will hear you. I will not be bound anymore by people's thoughts. I don't need you to validate me anymore. God has already called me to this thing. So I don't need your validation anymore. We're not and saying that just to step out there and do anything. We're only talking about walking in the plans of God. When, you know, because people, I don't want people to get it twisted. Don't send me any negative. Well, you can send what you want, but you know, it's not about that. But all right. at the same time, when you step out and be who God has called you to be, that different person, that unique person, people will then say, we've been waiting for someone like you. We've been waiting for a movement like this. That's just be, sure. just be who, <laughs> be who God has called you to be. It is amazing. Oh. And it is exciting. It's, it's almost like a metamorphosis. You know, you come out of where you are or where you were. Yeah. And before you know it, it's especially when you just trust God in the process, you trust God in the process. Well, Lord, I've never done that before. He's like, good. I got you, sis. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Let me show you how it's to be done. Let me show you who you are to touch during this season. Let me show you who needs the words that are in your mouth. Let yeah. me show you who needs Project 365. Glory and the people that we bring to the platform, it is their moment of empowerment. There may be people that brought, has been, once they step out, out of mm -hmm. and into who God has called them to be, God places a word in their mouth and then builds a platform like Project 365 to come and tell the world what he's put in their mouth. Glory. Oh, yes. Glory. Okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love it. I love um, it because even God. in those moments, it's like, God, why do you, I, I found myself at one point in time say, God, why does this person keep coming to me? Like I'm not broken. Why does this person keep coming to me? Like I'm not hurting. Why does this person keep coming to me about this, that, or the other Lord? I, I need help too. The more I help them. Mm, 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 mm. Whew, glory. The more I help them, the more I got delivered. My God, the more I poured into them, whew, the more God poured into me. Because what was happening is I was so bottled up because I was holding myself back from saying the things that God has uh, uh, told me to speak or told me to say. The more I poured out, ah, y'all gonna make me cry on here. I'm sorry. I, I start crying and laughing when at all at the same time. <laughs> The more I poured out to them, the more he restored me, the more he poured into me, the more he mended my heart, the more my mind <clears throat> got in control, the more he brought me together, the more he allowed me to see who he's calling me to be, the, the more he allowed me to know who my voice was assigned to, the more he allowed me to speak, the more I poured out, the more he poured back in. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. And this is becoming. This is who I'm becoming. This, I, I'm. You're not just going to wake up overnight and be this person. 
but this is who you are becoming. And those that need to hear you will hear you so that they can become and be bold in who they're becoming in me. This ain't in me because I promise you, Miss Portia, um, Shantae tagged me. I mean, she and she had a question and she said, do you mind if I put you in touch with Miss Portia? I was like, uh, I'm like, you know, I don't do stuff like that. Like, is this gonna be live or is this gonna are we gonna pre-record it and then upload? She's like, no, it's gonna be. I was like, you yeah. she was like, pray about it. And the Lord had to remind me who you're becoming. There's some people that you have to reach. There's some people that need to hear you. This is who, who, this is who you're becoming so that they can become. So that they can know it's okay to be uh, uh, to walk boldly in who they are. They can start right now. And they don't have to wait so long to get to where they're going. But they can do it now and not waste time because they see that you've been through it, and they can hear that they can come out of it, and that they can start now and go where they need to go and do what they need to do. This is who we're becoming, and so I'm in a relentless pursuit of god i'm not in pursuit of a platform i'm not in pursuit of somebody knowing my name i'm not in pursuit of making my name grow. i'm in pursuit of god because the more i seek him the more he ah, shows me. Mm -hmm. mm. that is so true so, and i know when you moved out when you stepped out and into there was a little fear there. There may have been a little fear Absolutely. there, a little uh, res not resentment, a little pullback. And but Absolutely. people were waiting. And once you step out and into, that's why we need people to be transparent. Hmm. You not everybody. Everybody has not been a preacher. Everybody has not been a deacon all their life. Everybody has been saved all their life. We have to become when 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 God releases us. Let's not go be put the mm -hmm. bug before the horse. Mm -hmm. When God releases us to say, tell your story, tell your story, share your story. I'm building the platform for you to share your story. We have to be re relentless and we have to do it afraid sometime. And as we step, God removes the ill shot. God removes the fear. God builds us builds confidence in us. Yeah. And before we know it, know it, we look back and say, God, you brought me. You brought me. And since you brought me, I'm going to reach back and pull my sister and pull my brother. I'm going to open myself up to you because I'm healed. I'm healed oh, and people are waiting. My God, my yeah. God. Listen, I was just taking it all in. <laughs> no, one of the things I, um, I was going to say, and then you kind of expounded upon it, which shows me this is really what God was saying. One of the things that you said was um, how you felt like, you know, you weren't ready to help those people. Like, you know, he told you to start this whole relentless woman and you're like, well, I'm so broken and et cetera, et cetera. But you also said the more you seek him, the more he shows you, the more you become. And I just wanted to say that when you follow the plan of God that he has on your life, even when you feel you're not ready and you're like, why are these people coming to me for me to help them? I feel that God shows people how he sees you. So even though you don't see you yet, other people see what God sees. So they're like, oh, this is someone I can go to for help, even though you feel like you're not in the place of help. And then, like you said, when you help them, then that's when you get free, you get delivered. And that's when you grow, you grow in yourself, you grow in him and you grow in your purpose. So I just wanted to expound upon that because I am such a believer in that, you know, when we're not ready and we feel like, God, I got so much going on. I got issues going on. I'm not perfect. And he's like, girl, don't worry about that. I already got yeah. it. And forget what other people think about you because I've already took the people out of your life that needed to be out. And I've placed people and I've sent people to help you. I've sent people to get help from you because they see you the way I see you. It's kind of like he kind of puts you on a little platform. Like this is who, this is my daughter here and she's great. Look at her greatness. And they don't see those flaws and things that you're working on that you said, you know, the reason why you feel like you're not good enough to do whatever he said. Cause he was like, girl, you're good enough. I got you. So I just wanted to 
to say that because you really, really blessed me. And I feel like I know, not that I feel, I know that people who watch this, they're going to be helped. They're going to be healed. It's going to be part of their journey. And Everything. even you doing this part, you said you were nervous when you started. I'm like, she's not nervous at all. You can't tell, but it's still a part of the process. You know, Glory something you're God. like, yeah, I don't know if I should do this. And God's like, listen, I got it. He gave you the words to say, the confidence to say it. And this is just another stepping stone in your growth and in your journey. And I know you're going to help others by them watching this. So thank you so much for being candid and with us and and just being obedient and, and listening to what he told you to do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You definitely me. have been a blessing. It. You sure. definitely, let me change my screen here. You definitely have been a blessing. And we're grateful to God for the opportunity to have you come and share on Project 365. Well, we're going to leave you for today. And it is so amazing. We're going to leave from this particular presence, but I'm so grateful to God that he never, ever leaves us. Lo, I'm with you always, even yes. until the end of this world. And we're grateful oh to God. God. And while we are away from each other, we're going to bless him, praise him, extol him, magnify him, because my God is a God that is worthy to be praised. Yes. We're grateful. We shall see you on tomorrow at 1 p.m. with another message of hope, encouragement, and inspiration. God bless you, and we'll check you later. Bye-bye. God bless you.